Meta, this is a pretend steering wheel. Hmm. Oh, hi. My name is B, like the letter B. This is Mr. Butterfly. And this is Meta, the brown bear. Today, we are learning about car parts. Meta. Right now, Meta and I are pretending we are sitting in a car. Ooh. We are using our imaginations to see the outline of the car. Can you see the white outline of the car? Mm -hmm. That is what Meta and I are imagining the car looks like inside our minds. Mm -hmm. Do you know what using your imagination means? It means seeing things that are not here. Instead, they are in here, inside our minds. Using our imaginations is a way to create fun and interesting things. Mm -hmm. We can think about something and then use our imaginations to experience it. Like imagining we are riding on a giant elephant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or pretending we are building a house. <laughs> we can use our imaginations to experience so many fun and creative things. And the best part is, it comes from your mind. Mm. But wait, let's get back to our pretend car. A car is made up of so many different parts. Right now, we are only imagining the outline of our pretend car. Mm -hmm. Would you like to help us place different car parts into our car outline so that we can have a car full of car parts? Mm -hmm. Yes! Okay, let's get started with the wheels. The wheels turn around and around to help move our car. These wheels have two parts, the outer rubber tire and the inner metal or plastic hubcaps. Where should we put the wheels? Mm. Do they go on the top of the car? Mm. No, I don't think so. <gasps> they go on the bottom of the car, right here and here. Mm. This is the roof of the car. It protects us from the wind and weather when we are driving. Where should we put the roof? Ooh. Does the roof go on the bottom of the car? Mm. No, it goes on the top of the car, right here. Ooh. Next, we have the car doors. These car doors allow us to get in and out of the car. Where should we put the car doors? Ooh. Do they go in the very front of the car? No, I don't think so. How about right in the middle of the car? Yes, <laughs> they go right here and here. Ooh. This is the windshield of the car. The windshield protects us by stopping the wind from blowing into our faces while we drive. Where should we put the windshield? Ooh. Hmm. Does the windshield go in the back of the car behind us? Ooh. No. It goes in the front of the car in front of our faces right here. <gasps> This is the windshield wiper. We use the windshield wiper to clear the windshield when it rains or snows. Where should we put the windshield wiper? Ooh. How about on the tires? Ooh. No, I don't think so. Oh, on the windshield, mm -hmm. right here. This is the hood of the car. It usually goes over the engine and other car parts in the front of the car. Where should we put the hood? Hmm. Does the hood go behind us on the back of the car? 
Mm. No, it goes in front of us on the front of the car right here. This is the radiator grill. It goes over the radiator to keep things from flying into it as the car moves. Where should we put the radiator grill? Mm. Does it go on the roof? No, I don't think so. It goes in the very front of the car right here. Mm. These are the bumpers. Their job is to help protect or cushion the car if the car were to bump into anything. Where should we put the bumpers? Mm. I'll give you a hint. The bumpers go in the front and the back of the car. <gasps> yes, right here and right here. Mm. This is the muffler and tailpipe. They work together to direct exhaust and gases out and away from the car and to quiet the loud noises of the engine. Where should we put the muffler and tailpipe? Do you think the muffler and tailpipe go on the top of the car? I don't think mm. so. They go near the back of the car, right here. Mm. Now, if you have an electric car, which uses electricity, there is no need for a muffler and a tailpipe. Mm. These are the headlights. They help us see the road and other cars when we drive in the dark at night. Where should we put the headlights? Yes, in front of the car, right here. Okay, these are the tail lights. They also help us see other cars in the dark at night. They are located in the opposite location of the headlights. Mm. If the headlights are in the front of the car, where should we put the tail lights? In the back of the mm -hmm. car, right here. Mm -hmm. This is a side view mirror. It helps us see behind us and to the sides of the car while we are driving. Where should we put the side view mirror? Mm. On the door right here. Mm. And the last item we are going to place is the gas cap. This is where you put gas into your car to help make it move. Where should we put the gas cap? Usually the gas cap is located on the side of the car right here. Mm. Now, if you have an electric vehicle, you do not have a gas cap because the car runs on electricity. Wow, Meta, we did it! Mm. Our pretend car now has all its parts. Whoa! Does this look like a car to you? I would say yes. Mm. That was really fun placing all the car parts into our pretend car. Mm. What's that? Mm. Oh, Meta just asked a very good question. Why are big, heavy cars able to move? That's Miss Y calling. Hi, Miss Y. Hi, B. Do you and Meta have a question for me? Well, yes, we do. Why are big, heavy cars able to move? Uh. That is a great question. Hmm. I have a cool car experiment to share with Meta when he visits the Curiosity Lab today. Bye for now. Bye, Miss Y. Miss mm -hmm. Y is our friend who is a scientist. She works at the Curiosity Lab in the city. Meta, are you ready to go visit Miss Y at the Curiosity Lab? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, Meta. I hope you have a wonderful time. Hi, Meta. It is so great to see mm. you today. Hello, everyone. My name is Miss Y, and I work here at the Curiosity Lab. Over there is my assistant, Bolty the Robot. Okay, so the question Meta asked is, why are big, heavy cars able to move? That is a great question. Mm -hmm. Bolty, can you pull up the video about why cars are able to move? You see, inside gas cars, there is an engine and a gas tank. The gas goes from the tank to the engine and into several parts called pistons. 
Inside the pistons, the gas becomes compressed and then ignited by an electrical spark, which creates a powerful combustion pushing the piston down, which turns the crankshaft. The crankshaft then turns the wheels. Now, there is a lot more parts and reactions that have to happen to make a car move, but that is the very basic explanation of how a gas car moves its wheels. Thank you, Bolty. Okay, before you go, Meta, we are going to make our very own moving car with some simple at-home supplies. <laughs> you will need a rectangle piece of cardboard, three straws, two wooden skewers, four plastic water or sports drink caps, tape, scissors, and a balloon. Are you ready to make a moving car? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna move my tray of stuff on my supplies right in front of you, Mato, okay? Can you keep an eye out on them? Mm -hmm. Okay, first you are going to cut a rectangle out of a piece of cardboard. I already cut out my cardboard rectangle and it looks like this. This will be the body of my car. Next, I'm going to tape two straws to my cardboard rectangle like this. Just gonna put one piece of tape here and a piece of tape here. Now these straws are acting as the axles. The axles hold the wheels to the car. Tape here and here. Okay. Now we'll use our scissors, our scissors to trim the ends of each straw like this. You may need an adult to do this step for you just because of the scissors and that's okay. Okay. Now, we will place two wooden skewers mm. into our straws like this. Okay. Mm, you see the car taking shape? Next, I'll use four plastic caps to make the wheels. I'm gonna pull each one. Woo. Okay, boop, 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 boop. I have already punched tiny holes into each of my plastic caps. Can you see the holes? You'll have to ask an adult to help you make tiny holes in each of your plastic caps. This step should be done by an adult. Now, I'll place my caps onto the ends of the wooden skewers like this. And went through. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the front of the car. What do you think, Meta? Does it start to look like a car to you? Mm-hmm. I think so too. Oh, you really gotta hold the skewer on the other end. <laughs> and push. <laughs> there we go. Now, you should make sure there's a little room between the wheel and the cardboard, or it's not gonna spin. I'm gonna just pull it a little bit out. Okay, so this is the basic structure of our car, the body and the turning wheels. Mm -hmm. See that, Mita? But how can we make it move? Well, I can push the car like this. That does work, but I want my car to move without me pushing it. Can you guess how we're gonna do that? Mm. Well, let me show you how. I 
will take my balloon and my third straw and tape it to the end of my third straw like this. The tape needs to be really tight around my straw so that when I blow air into my balloon, the air doesn't leak out of my balloon. Next, we're going to tape the balloon and straw to the body of our cardboard car like this. I'm going to tape the straw to the car. I'm going to do a couple pieces of tape just so I know it stays. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to cut my straw off at the end so this isn't weighing the car down. And we'll place it over here. Mm. Okay, now here is the really fun part. I am going to blow up my balloon and then pinch this area on the straw to hold the air in my balloon. Okay, when I let go of the straw right here, the air will flow out of the balloon, creating enough force to push the car across this counter. Are you ready? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna move that out of the way. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, mm. wow, it worked, Meta. <laughs> I hope you had fun learning why big, heavy cars are able to move and learning how to make your very own moving car. <laughs> Meta, thank you for visiting the Curiosity Lab today. And remember, Miss Y is here, so ask away. <gasps> Did you have a good time with Miss Y learning why big, heavy cars are able to move? <laughs> yes. All right. Do you know what time it is? Mm -hmm. It's time to dance. This is where we stop what we are doing, stand up and dance. You can do whatever dance move you feel like doing. <gasps> do you hear that? Mm -hmm. It's the idea train. <laughs> Look, it's Pinky the Boom Box. Hi, Pinky the Boom Box. Thank you, Idea Train. Mm -hmm. We will put Pinky the Boombox right here. Pinky plays our music. I will take this gold cassette tape and place it in here. Then I will close it up and push the button with the triangle on it. Are you ready to dance? Yes. Okay, mm. I will push the play button now. was a lot of fun. Okay, let's get back to what we were doing. Guess what? It's time to share some Meta art. This is a map of the world. 
The colorful shapes on this map represent all the different places we live on our planet. The first piece of art was sent to us by a family who lives in the United Kingdom. An awesome kid named Elbert made this Meta art. Meta, there you are in the middle of this art. Look at your big, happy smile. Above Meta is Mr. Butterfly flying in the bright blue sky. And over here is me, B. Below Meta is Pinky the Boombox in the green grass and Meta's favorite stuffy, Mimi the Orange Fox. And down here at the bottom of this Meta art is Miss Y. Albert, nice job on your handwriting. It says, I love B and Meta. Albert, thank you for sending us your fantastic Meta art. The next piece of art we are going to share today was sent to us by a family who lives in the United States of America, in the state of Michigan. An amazing kid named RJ made this Meta art. RJ, nice job at drawing Meta. I like that you gave him two ears, two eyes, a nose, and a smiling mouth. Look, Meta, RJ drew an amazing yellow light bulb in the center of your sweater. And look down here. RJ wrote Meta's name. M-A-Y-T-A. -A. Meta. Thank you, RJ, for sending us your magnificent Meta art. And the last piece of art we're going to share today was sent to us by a family who lives in Colombia. A cool kid named Santiago made this Meta art. Meta, look, it's Miss Y. Santiago, nice job at drawing Miss Y. I love all the details you included in your drawing. The yellow idea light bulb patch right here, her pens in her pocket, and her purple question mark earrings on both of her ears. Made to look, it's Miss Y's assistant, Bolty the robot. I love how you drew the blue curved lines around Bolty's ear light bulbs to show bright light coming from the light bulbs. And I also love how you added a speech bubble to show us what Miss Y is saying. The words say, remember, Miss Y is here, ask away. Thank you, Santiago, for sending us your fantastic mate art. Before we go, let's say five good things about ourselves. Do you want to do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll go first, and then you repeat what I say after me. Number one, I am strong. Number two, I am helpful. Number three, I am smart. Number four, I am brave. Number five, I am kind. Wow, that was really great. Nice job. To keep learning with Meta, me, and all of our friends, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for spending your time with us, and until next time, Bye! It's time to thank our awesome Patreon members. Thank you sincerely for your monthly support of our show. Special thanks to our Pinky the Boombox level patrons, Raffi, Sammy, Charlie, Caden, Miles and Maria. We thank you for your support.